Now I want to uh, show you a group of artists. Um, so uh, An Jung Shik is the one that we are going to see first. He used to be a royal painter. He was working for the emperors and empress. And then uh, Chae Yong Shin was also a court painter. Uh, and then uh, these other people, Go Hi Dong, Go Hi Dong, Kim Eun Ho, Byung Kwan Shik, Lee Sang Bum. These are students of An Jung Shik and Chae Yong Shin. And they created Joseon Art Associations in 1920s and 30s. Uh, and then they also created a uh, association of uh, painting and calligraphy in order to preserve that traditional, traditional, what is it? Uh, traditional painting style. So Isang Bong, Byung Kwan Sik, and Go Hi Dong, uh, they were all very important uh, members. So I'm going to show you An Jung Sik. This is An Jung Sik's work. Uh, it's called the Springtime in Mount Becca. So do you re recognize this building? So this is Gyeongbokgung Palace. And then the, the big mountains right behind. Uh, and then you can see a tiger uh, on, the, uh, on the front of the palace. Um, so this was painted uh, in 1915. But this is already when the country doesn't exist. Uh, 1910, right? Like 1910, Joseon does not exist anymore. So, uh, he misses uh, the, the old glory of the Joseon dynasty. Um, and then he is a follower of the true view landscape style of Jongseon. So the mountains in the background, these are more uh, in style of true view landscape. But An jung uh, studied the European painting too. He's been to Beijing and he emphasized the realistic drawings. And then Che Yong Shin um, is another uh, important Shin, not M, uh, important painter of this time. Uh, and this is 1914. So again, after Joseon Dynasty collapsed, so he painted the subject matter of Cho Che Yun Hong, who was a patriotic Kiseng, uh, who lived in the late Joseon Dynasty. Um, he, she refused to, to serve uh, foreign soldiers or you know, foreign dignitaries. Uh, so repeated in this manner. It's almost like a, a virgin and child of European tradition, right? The mother holding the, the, the child. Uh, usually Kiseng does not get married. Um, so uh, people in early 20th century, they were uh, influenced by uh, European uh, painting style. And Go Hi Dong is really remarkable. Uh, so Go Hi Dong uh, was born in a pretty good family. I think their families were translators, uh, well wealthy. Um, and um, he started uh, learning the traditional painting and Confucian literature, but he decided to go to uh, Japan. So he was the first Korean painter who studied in Japan and came back. So when he was studying in Japan, he learned how to use oil. So he's considered the first oil painter in Korean history. So if you look at Ko Hee Dong as a young man here, right, short hair, can you recognize what the season might be? Out of four seasons, which season would this be? Summer. Summer, right, how do you know it's summer? Um, because he's holding a um, what, what was it called? A uh, hand fan. Fan, fan. And yeah, hand fan. And then his upper shirt is open. Right. So uh, this is a transparent, uh, rainy shirt. Uh, and you know this shows it's really really hot summer. It's more, maybe like August, right? Really hot. And he's in, you know, in his room, but it shows him as a modern man. Like, a, um, he didn't follow the traditions of a Confucian portraiture, where you have to wear that proper attire for your rank, right? He, it's totally a modern uh, person in a way, right? So it's at the time it was a summer and it was very hard. He probably had a mirror in front of it you know, to see himself. So he decided to show him in this manner. 
and then he has books. These are you know European or modern books, right? Not not the traditional books. He has many books, so he's reading. And behind him, this is framed landscape painting, probably his own work. Um, so he's he's a modern man. That's what he's showing in his own self portrait. Um, so this is Go Hidong's house. His house is well preserved uh, as a um, building representing sort of a um, traditional Korean house, but a little bit of Japanese influence, and then also modern elements. Um, so that the hallway uh, is covered, uh, and then the roof uh, is really long, so that this area is not wet even it rains. So Ko Hidong was talented. So he was a superb oil painter, but he was also making a lot of uh, traditional topics of flower and birds, or uh, sort of a Zhang painting. Remember the Kim Hong Do style Zhang painting? Scenes of everyday activities where people enjoy the beautiful uh, like a scenery and uh, winter sports at the time. So that is. Fishing. Uh, this is this is fishing. Fishing uh, on the ice. So you make the hole and then you are uh, fishing. And this is the typical like a, a, a winter gear. You are going to have a inner hat so that it covers your ear and then the back. Um, and then let's talk about avant-garde. Can anybody explain what avant-garde means? Have you ever heard of avant-garde? Doesn't it mean ahead of its time? Yeah, ahead of its time. So originally, avant-garde is a military term, meaning uh, a person who uh, who reports ahead of the guard, like ahead of the other soldiers. Um, so it's a pioneer, right? If you translate into English, it's somebody like a pioneer, a uh, predecessor somebody at the at the front right like a, in a way they are uh, trend setters do you know the word called trend setters they are ahead of the trend um, so they are going to set the tone to the followers and so forth so these are examples of avant-garde art how they were received by the audiences so Kim Guan Ho uh, was uh, was an artist who studied in Japan so a typical pathway for artists is, again, after 1910, there is no country called Korea, right? So uh, Korean colonized citizens were also considered part of Japan. So it is natural for them to go to Japan, like uh, meaning Tokyo, the capital of Japan at the time, and study a little bit more advanced subject matters, such as law, right? In order to be a lawyer or medicine, and then, uh, other types and including arts. Uh, Japanese government will eventually create these medical schools or legal legal universities, law universities in Korea, uh, but that is a little bit later in 1920s. So uh, 1910s, people were going to Japan. So King Kano went to Japan to study art, Tokyo uh, School of Fine Arts at the time, the most uh, celebrated one, and then he painted a uh, nude. Can you imagine in neo-Confucian society that somebody paint nude painting and exhibit it? What, what would the audiences feel? So it's totally, uh, how can I say, uh, unexpected. So they think that modern art, right, like a, a oil art, oil painting, like a modern art is decadent. You know the word decadent? Uh, that decays the spirit of the public and that is not moral, like uh, it really uh, ruins the public sentiment and so forth. And so uh, this was well received in Japan uh, as his graduation project. but. Um, he cannot think of showing to the job, I mean, to the to the public in in Korea, and this is a newspaper article. It's more like a caricature. So uh, here, what they are saying is, um, you know, 
they went to a, a, a boy and a mother went to the uh, art exhibition and there is a reclining nude uh, and then the, the boy said just like a any usual uh, reader of the newspaper say mom look at this there is a, a naked lady lying down uh, and why is she uh, you know why did she take off her clothes